Hey there, welcome back to my studio. It is a Sunday morning and we're doing a test shoot with ice cubes and not specifically with ice cubes. It just so happens that the video is about ice cubes. So we're gonna be looking at these rather extravagant fake ice cubes and these are handcrafted. I've rented these in um, because renting them is far cheaper than buying them. And I wanted to have a good look at them first. We're gonna have some of these. I've also made some bog standard ice cubes. I've made some ice cubes with boiled water because there seems to be some sort of thought behind using that to make it clear, which you'll see it doesn't work. And I've also got this. This is a polystyrene box. These are some ice cube trays. You pop these inside here and freeze it. And the science is that because it takes so much longer to freeze, all of the air bubbles have time to escape to the top. And that gives you a clear ice cube. So we've got clear ice cubes, generally normally made ice cubes, and these really fancy premium ones. Now I'm about to do a shoot in the studio. If you want to see the full shoot, it's over on the Patreon. But what we're going to be looking at at the end of the shoot is when you should use each specific type of ice cube. Because there is no, this one is best. It's very much a, this is best in this specific type of work. And this is best when you need this particular outcome. So we're going to have a look at that, look at the images we've created, and then hopefully help you make the best decision as which type of ice you should be using for your drink photography. Hey, so whilst we're midway through the shoot, I just want to show you the difference in fake ice cubes. And let me just turn the time lapse off. That was going to get annoying. So, this here is an Amazon ice cube. They are very cheap. They all look pretty much the same. And it is kind of the same thing. But this here, this is a handmade ice cube. So can you see the difference? Now, in the images, it's even more distinct. But these are all completely individual, they're hand carved, hand cut, whereas these are like from a mold. So you sometimes get a mold line. These ones don't actually have them, they're quite good. Um, but you can just see it's very, very square and this one, not so much. And then in terms of shards, I don't have any shards of ice which are cheap and big, but here's a small shard of cheap ice. Let me see if I can get that focus a bit better for you. There we go, so that's the small ice. And this is the, the shard of ice, which is professionally independently made. So that's the difference in terms of like clarity and just build and all the rest of it. The first three are the ones I like. They were the, I think the second lot we shot during the day. Um, the rest of it, not so keen on, but it was my own fault for doing a test shoot off the back of a huge amount of shooting and work and stress uh, and thinking I'd produce something good, but there we go, live and learn. But these I like. Now, if you didn't see the, the full shoot on the Patreon, this will make very little sense, but these here are fake ice cubes. Um, I think they did a pretty good job of masking that. And this is a point where fake ice, it works well. If we jump down here, fake ice, not quite so good. And that's because there's a bit more clarity in the glass. And these have obviously been graded and we've got the grain added and everything, which kind of helps to hide that a smidge. But I think when we look at examples like this, so this is fake ice um, and it's very obviously fake and it doesn't work in this particular context at all. Whereas we look at the real ice in the same area it looks like ice. And for a drink like this, where there's nothing going on but the drink, very straightforward to do. However, when you start adding garnishes into a glass and straws, using real ice becomes quite tricky because it melts, it moves, and it slips. Whereas these ice cubes, they kind of stay in place. 
once you've filled a glass with them, there's not much going on inside a tall glass like this. Um, so, you know, that that's a very, and also those who are wondering, the spritz is an Alka-Seltzer hidden on the back of an ice cube. Um, but yeah, the, the, this is a time when fake ice cubes are really useful. Now, what I did do, and these are not shots I particularly like or will ever use, but I just thought they'd be of interest to you, is one huge fake ice cube, one huge standard straight out the tap freezer ice cube, and one huge straight out the tap but frozen in a polystyrene box ice cube. Same mould, just different freezing methods. And you can see some idiot knocked something during the shot. That'd probably be me. Uh, but there we go, so you can see the difference here. This is without any styling to the drink. Obviously you could add the frosting here and then place in the real ice cube, or the fake ice cube even, um, and that would help a lot. But it's definitely a look, and obviously this does not work in this aesthetic. This is not a good time to use this. But with whiskies, fake ice is very often used, and with the right set, it can absolutely work. This just looks a bit crash from the shot, but the actual ice I think looks okay-ish, but maybe not in this context, whereas this one here I think looks particularly good in this context as a straight out of camera setting. Now, this has the potential to look the best, but is the most difficult because you cannot control the clouding and where it appears and when it appears and the melting and all the rest of it. This one here is a bit easy to control because you know what you're getting, but again it will melt, and this one here is very easy to control because you can literally stick it to the bottom of the glass because it is not cold and melty. So that's worth considering. Um, and again, here's the fake ice, very obvious, not fake ice. I don't know what's gone on with these files. When you zoom in, they suddenly do look fine. Um, I think it's because I bought it in as a PSD. And capture one's just saying no. And again here, if you see like this, the frosting from a real ice cube. And it looks, you know, there's no spritz on this glass. This is actual frosting. Um, and it looks correct. It looks like it should do. But if we'd have had this on a set, would it be different? Absolutely. If you've got multiple things going on, you don't have the time to do this. And this was more just an experiment with ice cubes to see what looks good. Out of all these shots, I think this one and this one are the only two usable images. And they've already both been posted on my Instagram. Uh, and they're just very nice summery vibes. Um, nice lighting and all the rest of it. Good caustics, which is my new favourite word. And uh, that straw's a real pain to get in there, but we stuck it to an ice cube so it stayed in place. Um, which again, couldn't do with fake ice. With fake ice, real ice. As you can tell, busy few weeks shooting. But there we go, hope that's been useful to look at. So where does that leave us in the whole ice cube debacle? Well, from what I've shown you, hopefully you can see that if you're looking to do something complex and have things with millimetre precision, for example, a, a cocktail umbrella, a straw, a garnish, then having fake ice cubes is obviously gonna be the easiest way to do it. I still think that real ice looks better, but the actual logistics of using real ice are incredibly hard. Unless we were shooting just a drink, I would absolutely go for fake ice. In any scene where there's food and drink, you do not have time to get the ice and the drink perfect and to style the food. Even with two food stylists, instead it's just too much to ask for for the two worlds to align because a drink moves so quickly with real ice. However, if you want to get something which is stylized and has that fake ice look, which is definitely a look, it's definitely an aesthetic that people go for, that is also a good way to go. I think certain cocktails, certain whiskies look really good with fake ice. There are also certain brands which really want that clarity of the drink which fake ice can bring. So they don't want the frosting on the glass. It's quite, quite dated at the moment, really. They want to see straight through it, which I don't particularly think looks great, but that is the trend at the moment. They want the actual viscosity and clarity of the drink to show through, or lack of clarity, if that's the case. So what will I be doing? Will I be buying real ice cubes or fake real ice cubes, as it were? Probably, yes. I'm probably going to buy myself a nice, substantial selection of fake ice. And I'll have that in for emergency use. We will still rent in ice cubes from our usual rental places and the new rental place. I'll pop a link below to where I got these ice cubes from, by the way. Um, I paid full retail, there was no discount, no anything, I just wanted to give them a go. Um, and I'll definitely rent from them again. There's a few other places we rent from, some stylists who create them as well. Um, but I would definitely have some in-house just as a, a fail sale, should we be short of some. I probably wouldn't buy them in order to create original work with, because once you've used a statement ice cube, you've kind of used it. Uh, the standard cubes and everything like that is fine, you can chuck those in over and over again, but like the big cubes, the spheres and things like that, they're kind of one-offs in that sense. So renting's definitely a good way to go. And the people I rented these from were very easy to work with. Uh, the prices were very reasonable. 
So renting in the UK is definitely a way to go. There's places in the States you can rent from too. I'm not sure if these guys rent worldwide or not, but either way, drop them a line if you want to and I'm sure they can sort you out. Now in terms of the shoot itself, wasn't my finest work, but then what was I expecting? I'd come off the back of like two or three jobs. Um, I'd just run a workshop and we, you know, we'd had a lot on and for some reason I thought that weekend would be a good one to try something new. Obviously it failed, but that's fine. That's part of, you know, being a photographer. It's always better to go through the process. And do you know what? I got two images I can use on Instagram from the day and this YouTube video and a Patreon video. So all in all, it was a productive day. Not a great day for my creativity, but a good day for productivity, which is almost as important as a professional photographer. Anyway, if you like this video, let me know. If you have any more questions about ice cubes or anything you'd like to see in the future, drop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to either create a video or answer them individually. And I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.